Hello everyone and welcome to a Static Grass Creations vlog. We're continuing off of the uh, Circle of Orberos commission. I'm just going to jump right in. Um, I just finished uh, painting the dark green scales on his back. So I'm going to move on to uh, fixing up the bone in preparation for highlighting and washing. So I'm taking uh, jack bone and base coloring the forgotten bone pieces that I missed last time. Every time I want to uh, paint and talk at the same time, uh, recording with my camera, someone's always someone's always like making noise upstairs or something, and doing it after uh, I can hopefully cut out most of the noise. But oh well, this is all right. Um, yeah, so just finished uh, painting up those and now I'm going to move on to the cloak actually. Is it the cloak? Well, I'm using Games Workshop's Kemri Brown. Oh, okay, I am highlighting the wood now. So I'm going for like a driftwood feel. Um, it's more dried. Basically I'm following the box art. Um, I said that before in an earlier video. So the wood on the staff and the fish totem are a little bit more desaturated. So I'm gonna follow that. Another story from Warhammer Total War. Um, I'm still really bad at it. Playing on easy mode, I'm getting my butt handed to me by Chaos. By the Warriors of Chaos. Like I'm just turtling. I'm having a good time, kind of um, beating down the orcs, doing my mission quest to get... Uh, the sword of power and all that for um, Conrad von Karstein. I think his name is Conrad. Um, and yep, I look over one turn and suddenly the entire uh, human realm is being annihilated from by chaos. There's like Colex Sun Eater and Sigvald the Magnificent and Archeon just waltzing around the land doing their own thing and I'm I'm holding them back with my armies but eventually they like slowly overpower each of my settlements cut me off and freaking ridiculous like they destroyed several factions by themselves just through their sheer weight of numbers I'm starting again because I'm bad and I'm still learning to play. <laughs> so anyway, I am using the Camry Brown, Brown again as a another highlight to the cloak. Just kind of clicking around at the 
same time. Making sure I'm in the right spot. a couple little scales there on the tail so I'm gonna go back to Caliban green and paint those up. There's a lot of like miss spots that I usually do and um, because I have that wet palette it makes it a lot easier just to go back to the color and fix it up. Highly recommend just making a making a wet palette. Very simple. It's just Two paper towels or you can even use like half like sponges that you cut in half um, like flat wise so you can have a bigger surface area um, and then you put a piece of parchment paper on top uh, put some water in there so the paper or yeah the paper towel can just soak it all up okay right here I'm filling the mouth with green um, instead of black that's it is different for me I usually just fill it in with black but this time um, following the box art it is a green dark green mouth you can put some black in there maybe but um, no I think the I think the green is dark enough um, might be the end of Caliban Green. Probably gonna use it. I'm gonna be using it to um, base, base the model and mix it with a highlight or something like that. So going to Battlefield Brown from P3. Just putting it onto my wet palette here. darkening the hood, darkening the Miss Speaker's hood. Um, I felt that the Kemri Brown was too light for him, so I wanted I wanted a transition from a darker color to a lighter color. I think, I think this way definitely feels a lot more natural and it follows the box art more closely. watching uh, Critical Role, but um, last night I definitely, I took took a little bit of a break from it uh, just to watch the episodes that came out for the first season of, um, for the first season of Steven Universe. And for those of you who don't know what Steven Universe is, it's a uh, it's a cartoon cartoon on uh, Cartoon Network. It's for it's a kids show. Um, the the episodes are just like little ten minute um, ten minute long animations, and like I found it like at first you think like ten minute long kids show and that's uh, probably kind of dumb. It's actually very well done. The, um, the story and everything is very interesting, animation is very good, the fight scenes are really good too. You should watch it. The, uh, and then like every episode or two they have like a small little song that someone sings and uh, it's very cute. Yeah, I'm also darkening the uh, 
wraps on the misspeaker's feet. Yeah, the Steve is Steven Universe. Uh, finished watching those. There's only six episodes in the uh, sixth season. Waiting for more to come out. And then I move back to um, Critical Role, and I'm on episode six. And that that episode is when um, they find or they they do a new intro to the to the Twitch stream uh, and it looks so good so professional like they're all in costume and they're all in their stances and whatever and then Matt Mercer at the end when he like f throws up the dice and then freeze frame and then he closes the book oh so good Although the um, the names go, the text go by a little bit fast. I would I would have liked to see uh, see the text go on for a couple seconds longer at least, because it goes like it flashes their name, and then their character's name. It goes pretty much in quick succession, and then um, the third line of text is their class. I think that's how it goes. Looks really good. That's my one criticism of it, but otherwise, it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm also darkening the his uh, what's that called? His upper arm, upper arm bandages or wraps. Yeah, I, I'm amazed that uh, Geek and Sundry managed to get uh, all these people to do a Dungeons and Dragons session on a stream. Like, you never would have thought that people would just want to watch it. They're really funny. They they know their rules. They know. They know how to act and they're voice actors, right? So whenever they're making sounds and stuff, it like really gets you into it. And I'm now almost every Tuesday. Yeah, almost every Tuesday for, I guess we took a break and now we're starting up again. Me and my buddies were starting up, we're continuing on with our Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Um, because of Critical Role. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for them to do it. Alright, so now I'm going to be using Games Workshop's Morph, Mornfang Brown and P3's Battlefield Brown. Uh, I'm going to mix them in a 1 to 1 ratio, and that will be my highlight layer of all of the areas that I just darkened with Battlefield Brown. So there's uh, his hood, his feet, his feet wraps, and his upper arm wraps. Those are ill, because uh, Mornfang Brown, it has a little bit of a reddish tinge to it. It's more of a red or really dark orange kind of brown, and that really makes uh, not only the mist speaker's face uh, pop out more because of the contrast, it also makes the hood pop out as well because it's surrounded by green. And with that contrast there, the green versus red, you get uh, quite a vibrant color scheme. So in our most recent adventure in Dungeons & Dragons, uh, we continued on with 
we continued on from when I punched a hole in the basement it, or towards the basement. Turns out it was just like a big cave, ice cave or something like that. Uh, there wasn't anything down there so we popped back up, we went to the second floor of our mansion and we found these like ice plant zombie things. Then we did that little encounter and then in the corner we find this dormant giant ice plant looking thing. It has like giant tentacles and stuff like that. Now our DM after the session he said we didn't actually have to fight <laughs> that thing. That was our choice. That was our bad. Um, provoking it because we're like, hey, it's a thing. We should go kill it because that's what you do in D&D &D, apparently is just shoot everything on sight that isn't uh, human or half elf. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we got these, we got this, uh, necklace of fireballs things. So they're, it's basically, like, um, bound, a bound spell of fireball attached to beads of a necklace, and there's five of them. So we decide to shoot that bundle of, basically, grenades into the mouth of the plant, <laughs> and then suddenly the plant comes away, we do like hundreds of points of damage to it just from the necklace. Still alive, obviously, because it's, you know, a boss. And we just... Now, we attack it, we keep shooting it, it fires bramble, magical bramble bushes at us, and, like, wounds us severely. I'm in there, within it, like, trying to take out its uh its weak point or whatever and it's right now we ended it when it grasps me by one of its tentacles and is crushing me right now <laughs> so that's that's what's going on in my dungeon and dragons campaign so we might have a party wipe because the this boss creature is that powerful all right, uh, moving on to the bone. I'm going to be using Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade. It's a wash to darken uh, the bone bits that I base coated. Just gonna give it a little bit of shading and that's what it's for. And then, and then I'll put in some um, Menoth White Base, or Ushabdi Bone, as a highlight. You know, make the bone pop out. Make make it so that they look like something. So I uh, put in put in another request to book a place in Seattle for the PAX long weekend. Um, we we decided not to use the first one that I talked about before. I think I talked about that before. It was a twelve person place that we first found, and it would be just under three hundred dollars a person for three nights. We thought that was you know pretty good right um, but then we can't get 12 people there's 11 now uh, so we found another place and turns out this place even cheaper farther away sort of from um, downtown Seattle it's uh, east of the i5 I think this place that we're going to 
So it is in Bellevue, I think. Um, and yeah, it turns out this one is going to be like $200 a person. So awesome. And it's for 11 people instead. <laughs> so hopefully that works out. Hopefully I get a response uh, later today from that. Okay, so next is a one-to-one -one ratio mix of uh, P3's Heartfire and Games Workshop's uh, Gretchen Green. The Games Workshop paint is not called Gretchen Green anymore, I think. Um, that's the one that I have is an old foundation paint. Still has some life in it, so using it until it finally expires completely. And then, oh, I got an email about the uh, the painting class that I uh, that I mentioned. Um, turns out that it, there's like a conflict with the dates, and it needs to be moved to October rather than November. It's like, oh, oh, heartbroken. I just made a, I just booked time off for that time too. So I'll try, I'll try get some more time off, but. We'll see. All right, so that one-to-one -one mixture uh, is, you know, it's going to be quite yellow, and that is going to be used to highlight the green on the mist speaker. So this is just this is just going to be like the raised edges, the raised areas. Um, no particular like direction of light. Um, that I'm going to be using. It's just if it's raised, then it gets a highlight. So all this area here, all the muscul musculature, that all gets highlighted. Get some depth in there. under the tail and then the uh, the box art the fins are actually an orange color I'm gonna be doing that you'll see that it and uh, yeah once that gets put down it's mm, looks really nice So uh, yeah, it turns out to be a really eye-catching model. Um, with all the the reds you put in there with that uh, the camo green, it's very quite eye-catching. Now I need to find, um, <laughs> I need to hunt down people for money now. <laughs> uh, I don't want to keep a $2,000, uh, $2,000 charge on my card for very long, right? That'll be, that'll be inconvenient. I gotta do my uh, my Death Watch campaign again. I think that'd be really cool to do up again. Yeah, not only do I play D and D, Shadowrun, and all that. I haven't played those in a while. Um, just playing D and D for now. But I did run a campaign for Death Watch. For uh, Warhammer 40k Death Watch. Now that's a fun game. 
if, um, like, best I can describe it is, De in Death Watch, you're a space marine, or a group of space marines, from Warhammer 40,000. If you've ever read the lore for Warhammer 40,000 space marines, you know that uh, these guys are like gods of war and will just completely annihilate anything and everyone. It's ridiculous, like, bolter shots just dead and your strength is so high that you can just like crush heads like melons and it's just... Every encounter aside from like boss encounters are really easy. <laughs> and um, what I was doing in mine, I... My campaign was Death Watch versus Tyranids. First mission, um, they were actually sent to assassinate some Tau leaders that had gained a foothold on this, um, I think it was an Agri world in the Imperium. Oh, uh, here I'm using P3's Hearthstone, Hearthfire. Um, just straight out of the pot, no mixing, just to do some edge highlighting on uh, on the very raised edges of the green. But anyway, um, yeah, so there's like the Tau on the world, you have Imperial Guard, they're just fighting, they're fighting it out and duking it out and then like the first thing is they're drop potted right into the middle of the fight um, as close as they can get to the ethereal and um, and the battle suit commander so they're so the ordo xenos they request they requested the death watch team to keep um, to capture the tau leaders for further study and interrogation but that's just an optional thing. If they have to kill them, they have to kill them. But of course, being space marines, they <laughs> they don't have to. They can do whatever they want. I guess is what I can say. Um, now in Death Watch, because um, you are the space marines. And you are the military arm of the Ordo Xenos. When you get sent on a mission, it's it railroads the it's a it's it's a natural railroad for the participants. Uh, instead of like Dungeons and Dragons, where it's all open world, do whatever you want. Here's a story. Um, you can just walk away. To a different country, start up a business, and you know, purchase in just like kidnap children or something, and you can do that. Whereas Death Watch, um, you are basically sent to a planet, do the mission, or you die, <laughs> and that's that's pretty much it. Um, so it, it is, it it's more complicated, I would say. Um, than Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition in terms of like how to get to know the rules what stats go with where um, like Dungeons and Dragons is a fantastic way to get into uh, role playing that way you know you know how to act you know like the flow of the story and everything and then once you get that kind of down then move on to Death Watch and if you just want, um, if you don't want any distractions, you just want the story and action, lots and lots of action, um, then yes, Death Watch would be perfect. So yeah, like, from the start, it's, in my campaign, I have them drop potting down, they're like, I'm just testing them, right? So because this is the first time that I did, I've done um, any kind of dungeon or game mastering for anything. So I'm like, okay, send a squad of Tau Fire Warriors at them. 
They kill them in one round, and a round in Death Watch is like four seconds. <laughs> so it's like, they fire away. They kill everyone in like a single round of combat. It's so fast. Um, and this is, I'm, I'm like not holding back at all. They're so powerful. So then they, you know, like run around the town and everything. Um, and then they finally come upon the command center where the ethereal is. Now remember, each round is four seconds long around there. So they're scouting out this area and they want to get into the building and capture this ethereal. So a space marine, I think, can run... It's like... a hundred feet in like four seconds or something like that it ridiculously fast anyway I don't know if a hundred feet in four seconds is fast I don't think that's fast okay well it's it's much faster anyway they run very fast so they cover this ground so quickly burst through the doors light it on fire the Tau can't even react fast enough they kill all the guards before they can react, they capture the ethereal, they break his arms and legs so he can't run or fight back, <laughs> put him on their back, and then um, by the time that's all finished, they got into the compound, captured the ethereal, and it was all under 30 in-game seconds. Which, you know, <laughs> made me realize that they need much harder objectives. Alright, so here is um, Kador... Kador Red Highlight. So it's uh, quite a bright orange. And I'm just using that to paint the fins. As you can see, the, like, the contrast between the orange and the green. Um, it's not so jarring uh, because it's orange right the green has yellow in it right and it was further highlighted up with yellow because it's such a bright orange more yellow in it possibly white um but because of that the contrast isn't jarring if i used a dark red uh it would just be like basically a christmas theme <laughs> and yeah because it's you know a nice a nice pale orange. Um, it still it still catches the eye, but it isn't jarring. It doesn't like I don't want to say that it doesn't remove focus from the model. Naturally, it's supposed to because of the contrast, but it helps work it all together, right? And then uh, I'm going to be highlighting the orange further um, with yellow anyway. So that'll tie up the green as, and the orange together more consistently.
We're back to Death Watch. Um, so yeah, I have there was there five. There was either five or six, and you can choose from different chapters that are drawn into this Death Watch unit. And so I have like a, a space wolf. Um, what are they called? Room priest is the psychic guy. Um, I have a Dark Angel's Devastator, a Storm Warden's um, Tactical Marine. So he's supposed to be the leader of the bunch. Tactical, the Tactical Space Marine um, is like an all-around all has kind of all around uh, stats and squad boosting capabilities. So he takes he usually takes on more of a leadership role. Um, I have a Blood Angels Assault Marine and a Ultramarines uh, Librarian. Now if you've never heard of Storm Wardens, um, I think it's a it's not. It's not a like a legion chapter. It's not a first founding chapter. It, it's down the line. They're more of like a a marshal. Um, using they like to use claymores, and they're all about you know storms and thunder and the power of the weather or something like that. Um, and they get bonuses for being in close combat or challenging uh, enemy champions so I'm gonna call it um, that should be should be quite a lot of content now um, so next time I am gonna continue on with the misspeaker hopefully I can finish it and it'll just be like a three-part series. So, that is all for today, and I'll see you next time. Time.